Hello, I'm Philip Benyon and we're here at my farm at Haunton Manor uh, where we have a, a philosophy of sustainable intensification which means we try to grow decent food crops with high yields. We grow what you can see here, my biomass crop for energy and over to my left we have some habitat which is part of the higher level scheme. So this is what my philosophy is. We need to be growing fuel, food and biodiversity and that I think is the farming of the future. Uh, if we look at the biomass crop here this is miscanthus. Miscanthus is a, a, a grass crop, it's a grass crop from the far east uh, but it grows very very well here. We only have to plant this once, um, we think that the the, uh, the plants will probably last 25 years but we're not sure, we're not sure of that yet. So there's a, a fair cost in actually putting the crop in the ground but then it grows from the rhizomes year on year. It requires so far no fertiliser, it certainly requires no nitrogen fertiliser and we've been testing the soil on a two yearly basis to see if the phosphate and potash falls over, over years and so far it's held up. So as far as carbon saving is concerned this is an excellent crop. We reckon 90-95% carbon saving largely because it needs no nitrogen fertilizer. So this is the, uh, the nub of the sustainability of this crop. We can produce a crop without fertilizer producing 12 to 14 tonnes a hectare every year without having to uh, cultivate the land and the only energy input is in the harvesting process, in the windrowing and baling that we do in March every year. So this crop here that you see now, in about four to five weeks time, it will be cut and baled and that will be our fuel crop for the next year. Here we are in our bale store where you can see here what's left of last year's crop. Now these bales are 8 feet by 4 feet by 4 feet, obviously not usable by the de domestic consumer. Uh, the domestic consumer, th there are alternatives, wood chip from wood fuel or from this type of fuel, pellets, briquettes, um, we can make all sorts of different forms for this fuel so that domestic uh, users with domestic boilers uh, can have forms of biomass that they can use. These bales, these weigh about 600 kilograms, so we need mechanical means of putting them in the boiler. So bales of this size are only really useful for farms, garden centres, where the, where the machinery is available to be able to use uh, fuel in this size of unit. So this is what we use, we, we feed them into our boiler, uh, what, about one per day in the depth of winter. Uh, in the summer, two a week, just to heat the, the, the hot water. Uh, so these are very, very useful for us, but for domestic consumers, this isn't the size of, uh, of package that you want. Yes, you can see the boiler here in the background. Um, on the side of the boiler we have a control box which means we can control the, uh, the fan speed uh, and control the speed of the burn. And this is very, very important in terms of the smoke uh, issues because if we put too much smoke through we can, uh, too early, we can end up with, too much, uh, with a very smoky burn. Um, so we, we, can, um, we can monitor the burn and, and control it absolutely through the, through the air input. Uh, we also, in the flue, we have a, a gas afterburner. Uh, this is only necessary when the, when the, in, in the early stages of the burn, when it's smokiest uh, and when the wind is blowing, uh, blowing towards a village. 
when the wind's blowing away from the village, uh, then we don't have any smoke problems. Uh, so we can we can use this 24 hours any any day of the year, uh, whatever the weather conditions, uh, which is absolutely necessary. And we have enough heat produced by this uh, by this boiler for uh, for three or four times the size of my house. So what we're intending to do. Uh, once we've finished the costings, once we've, once we've ironed out all the problems, is to try and sell the heat to our neighbours. Uh, we've costed the heat out and we think it's costing around about five to six pence at the moment um, if we ignore the, uh, the capital uh, depreciation. Uh, about five to six pence a unit. If we have to put the gas on, it goes up to about seven or eight pence a unit. So it's, a, it's, it's cheaper than the electricity we can buy. Um, it's greener. And, uh, and it's our own and we, we've, we've got control over it and we have, don't have to worry about fluctuating electricity prices. The heat produced by the boiler is stored here in these two buffer tanks. Uh, we've got 15,000 litres of water here and in fact we've actually find, found that it's not quite enough but it does mean that we can burn a bale all through at one, one, at one go without having to close the boiler down. And that's important because that's, we need that for an efficient burn. So we store the heat here and uh, these, these can uh, run up to about 85 to 90 degrees centigrade and uh, we can draw water off as long as the temperature's above about 45 degrees centigrade. The pumps that are in here uh, then pump the water down to the house on demand and it's all automatic. As the house has a demand for heat, uh, the pumps set in action and pull the heat through the water uh, uh, through insulated pipes down to the house. Uh, so all of that works automatically and we have to do nothing. Uh, as, you, as you can see, uh, when we look at the whole system, it's a very intricate system and we've needed quite a lot of uh, capital, uh, cap capital investment to put it all in. But it works very easily. We just have to load the boiler once a day uh, in the coldest period, twice a week during uh, warmer periods, and uh, the rest of it works completely automatically and we, we have to do virtually nothing. I think this is the future of this type of installation. It has to be user-friendly. This is user-friendly for us, but obviously if you're a, more, if you're a domestic size of, of establishment, then you need to be using things, things like wood chip or pellets uh, so that you can use them for a smaller size boiler and with, uh, with your own size of store. But this suits us, and I think that it suits an awful lot of businesses uh, of our sort of scale. Here we have the control system for the house. We have four zones. They're all automatically temperature controlled so that the, the zones, the pumps click, click into, the, into action as soon as it has a heat demand. Here we have a, a, a large water cylinder for the hot water system for the house. Uh, we unified three former water systems into one. Uh, this also has a backup immersion heater. So if the water uh, up in the buffer tanks is too cold, this automatically turns the, the, uh, the immersion heater on and as soon as the water up there heats up sufficiently it turns the immersion heater back off again and uh, starts pumping water down, down from, from uh, the buffer tanks. When the water's too cold in the buffer tanks it will not pull, try to pull water down from the buffer tanks. So, and all this happens without us having to touch anything. Um, obviously there's a lot of automation here and you do have to watch out for things going slightly wrong but we have a, a car, we have a maintenance uh, crew that can come in that are, who installed it all and they're on hand they're not very far away so uh, so far this is we're very very pleased with the uh, with the heat and the control and uh, and also uh, it, it's economical